Hello and welcome, I'm Sam. I'm here to show you how to solder. So if we have a look down here, okay, the equipment that we have here is of course soldering iron and this soldering iron is looking very matte. We're gonna have to um, uh, tin the tip of this, it's not looking very good. Solder, and we're using lead-free solder. If you buy some solder from uh, a variety store or wherever, you may be getting some le uh, lead in your solder. Just make sure you wash your hands if you are buying that type of lead so you don't ingest it and end up slowly poisoning yourself. And this is what we're going to condition our tip with, some steel wool. Uh, I mean, if you've, your kitchen has some um, coarse steel wool like that, it'll do the same job. Uh, we're going to be using some masking tape to hold our work so that it's less fiddly and we're not burning ourselves. This will also help so we don't burn ourselves. And safety glasses, very important. Very important if you're wearing these, especially if you're cleaning your tip. I've, um, if you're pushing this in here, you can get bits of molten lead um, up into your eye. So you should be wearing your safety glasses, definitely. Now, um, the solder that we're using, um, actually also inside, is uh, it's rosin core solder. So on the inside of the solder, there's actually um, some flux or rosin inside it, and that cleans the work. If there's anything that I want you guys to learn from this video presentation, it's heat bridge. And what does that mean? It means how do you get the heat from the soldering iron into your work, which in this case is going to be some brass rods. Uh, and you do that with creating a bridge for heat. Now, that means that you need, that means that you need to allow some time for that heat to transfer into the work. So you don't want to be going dab, 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 dab with a soldering iron. You want the heat on the work so that the heat travels through into the work instead of tapping it. I, I'm going to cut some wires and got my safety squints on, so that's good. I'm going to make sure I don't uh, have them flying around. And you can hold into the table there, or maybe you could hold both ends at once and then cut. Now I'm going to cut a third piece. And I'm going to make things easier for myself by masking, taping them to uh, this wooden block. Now this wooden block is useful because uh, you want to avoid getting the soldering iron onto the wooden block because this has glue in it and it will start tarnishing the end uh, and work against you trying to keep things nice and clean. The flux on the inside is also going to work at cleaning the pieces of metal so that the solder sticks to it because it doesn't stick to it unless it's nice and clean and hot. Okay, so first of all, how am I going to get the soldering iron nice and um, and what's called tinned? Well. First port of call would be to try and just add some solder to it and maybe the flux inside the, uh, inside the solder will do a job of cleaning it and sticking to it. But in this case, it's not. Can you, can you zoom up in there? You see how um, when it melts, it just forms into a ball, falls off the soldering iron and uh, doesn't stick onto uh, the soldering iron. We want the solder to be sticking to the soldering iron so that we can form that heat bridge and get the heat into our work. So I'm going to try some of this steel wool inside this convenient holder. Got my safety squints on. Just going to rotate the soldering iron and try and abraze all, that, all the different sides of the soldering iron. And now we're going to try again. Okay, you can see the solder is now starting to stick to the soldering iron. Okay, another trick up our sleeve is tip tinner. So tip tinner is basically flux, which is that stuff that's in the inside of our solder that helps clean things, and mixed with a little bit of solder um, granules. Okay, hopefully you can see now that is starting to, the solder is starting to stick to the soldering iron. 
better now. So here where it's not, where it's matte, we can get it uh, melting, but it just balls off. Whereas here, where it's nice and shiny, it sticks to it. If we just uh, tin two, two rods, we can use that bit of solder on both of them to then help stick them together. So tin the end of my soldering iron, that's gonna create a heat bridge, which I then put onto the rod, give it some time for it to get hot, and then I should be able to add some solder and you can see straight away that the, the flux is burning onto it, cleaning it, and the solder is sticking to it. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one. Make sure the end is tinned. Apply that bit of solder so that the heat can transfer into the rod. Add a little bit more solder and that flux is gonna clean the work and the solder then sticks to it. And now that they both have some solder on it, I should be able to just add some heat to it again, let them both turn to liquid. And remove the heat, let it solidify, and bam, they're connected. So this can be useful if, you're, if you've got two pieces that um, you just want them to stick to each other as soon as possible. Wet the end, the solder's stuck to it nicely. I'm going to use my pliers, because it's probably hot still, to put that into the right position. And I don't even have to, uh, it gives me another hand to just get this in the right position. And then I could just add some heat, let them both turn to liquid, hold it, and now they're in. Um, the right position. That's just a little trick that will help you if you've got a, you know, a fiddly kind of work. It's just to repair the ends and then add them. The other way to do it is to do them both at the same time. So I'm going to do this third one here. Um, they're not touching at the moment so I'm going to try and just maybe make this one liquid again and let, it, let the end fall down. Yeah, so now that they're touching, that's gonna to be a stronger joint. Okay, so this time I'm gonna solder them both. They haven't been prepared, they're nice gold and bronze color, and I'm gonna solder them both at the same time. Got the end tinned. I'm gonna try and get my soldering iron in so it's touching both of them and transferring that heat into both of them. Give it some time for the heat to get in, and then I'm gonna add some solder. And I'm trying to encourage that solder to form a fillet and wedge which will make it stronger. So I've got one that will be closest to me and maybe if I encourage it over here as well that will make it a nice strong fillet. And perhaps this one when I, I was moving it before so I'm just going to try making this one stronger bring that fillet in a bit. So you want to see a shiny joint. And to do that, you don't want it being moved when it's drying and solidifying. So here we have two soldering joints that were done. This one on your right, you can see the solder uh, is nice and shiny. That's what you want to see. And it's kind of got a little pink color as well. If you turn it over, it's, uh, it's hugging lots of the metal, so that's going to be nice and strong. The one on your left, the solder is looking a bit dull, and it also hasn't hugged all of the, the joint. And I'm reckoning that this one's going to be weaker than this one. So let's have a look if we try and break it. Oh, they're both actually not too bad. Ah, but here we go, that one's broken there. Let's try breaking this one further. This one seems to be a bit stronger, as I predicted. Uh, the reason being is that this is a not a great soldering joint. Uh, it might have been moved when it was solidifying, and also perhaps there wasn't enough heat in it. If there was more heat in it, then the solder would occupy um, and fill it more and create a stronger joint. You also uh, want to use the solder 
the, sorry, the flux in the solder to try and encourage it to move further up the joint so that uh, you end up with a stronger joint. The flux inside here, as it cleans, means that the solder wants to stick to the area that's just been cleaned. All right, so hopefully you'll end up with some nice, strong solder joints like this. I encourage you to break your soldering joints to get an idea of how strong they are. Uh, and I'll see you in the lab. Thank you.